Mr. William Braun is the lead consultant congenital heart surgeon at Birmingham's Children's and Adult Care Centres. During this interview, the plans for the surgical treatment of single ventricle heart disease will be explored. There are different types of single ventricle and some uh, procedures are more complicated for that individual patient than others. But in general what we try to do is to uh, connect the single ventricle to the uh, body circulation so the blood is pumped around the body and then usually uh, restrict the blood flow to the lungs so that the lungs aren't damaged either with a plastic tube or with a restricting little band around the artery to the lungs. And then having got them through that period of after the birth for the first few months. The second stage is where we connect the vein from the upper half of the body directly into the lungs. And this stabilizes them, allows them to grow a lot more so that at the third stage, which is the Fontan procedure or the completion of the Fontan procedure, around about four or five years of age before the children go to school, the vein from the lower half of the body, the inferior vena cava, is connected directly to the lungs. Usually these days by a tube outside the heart, a plastic tube outside the heart. And that's then to finish the three stages for that individual patient. There are variations in the technique for individual patients, but that's the general overall uh, plan of operation. The risk for patients who have a single ventricle are, are really considerable. The first thing is that this is not a curative procedure. It's a very, what we call a palliative procedure. It's an approximation to get a normal circulation as near as possible that we can. The important thing is there is not a pumping chamber taking the blood to the lungs in the Fontan procedure. So the blood just flows around the lungs. The risks vary from one um, type of uh, single ventricle to another, but in general, it's around about 20% for that first procedure when the patients are born. Um, and then uh, for the more complex conditions, and, and much lower, probably around about 10% for the more straightforward conditions. If you look at, say, a group of patients like hyperplastic left heart syndrome, though, if you look at their survival of that group of patients over the first two or three years of life, probably about 55 or 60% will be alive at about three to four years of age. We don't know in the long term, over the next 20 or 30 years, what that survival will be. But we, wouldn't, we would not expect it to be near the normal population if you take a person with a normal heart. It would be wrong of us to tell the families or the patients to, that they would have a, a normal life expectancy. Uh, obviously, other things might arise in the way of medical science to help them, in the way of supporting the muscle of the heart, transplantation and so forth. But that has to be, um, even at this stage, problematic for them. And it's important that they're fully informed about this. The most important thing is that they're very supportive and that the parents who come with a little baby um, often in a very shocked condition, shocked psychologically as a family, as a group, that they've got a baby with this sort of complex problem not knowing what will happen, can turn to Little Heart Matters as well as the health service for help and support and knowledge. Uh, they can meet other families who have gone through similar experiences and uh, they can, that can be supportive for them. And this can start even before the, the baby is born, particularly now the majority of the patients that come through with these sort of complex problems are diagnosed antenatally around about 18 weeks in the pregnancy, 20 weeks in the pregnancy. And it's, we notice as physicians how, how helpful it is when we see the patients later on where they've gone through quite a lot of the trauma, psychological trauma early on and have adjusted to the, the, the fact that they're going to have a baby with a problem which is going to need quite a lot of surgical procedures, may not survive. It doesn't make it any easier, but it does seem to make it more tolerable, and uh, the parents can cope with it. They've got their family around them. Everybody knows they're not having to explain at a drop of a hat to mothers, fathers, grandfathers, parents, you know, that they've got a problem and go through all that. It's all been sorted out, as it were, before they enter in a, into a, a surgical program, which in itself is very stressful and complex. 